Century Age of Ashes has got to be the most fun competitive multiplayer dragon game I've ever played. Truth being told, I've not played a lot of competitive multiplayer dragon games before, but regardless, this definitely takes the cake. However, no matter how great the game is, when you're first starting out, it can seem like a lot is going on, and you may not know or understand how to actually get good at this game. So here's five tips to make you a much better dragon rider and give you a chance in every match you play. Number one, always be rifting. Though the tutorial in this game is pretty useful, one thing it does not explain clearly is where to get rift energy. Rift energy allows you to boost and keep your speed up as you move across the battlefield. There are three ways to get rift energy. One, by finding rifts in the water or ground that look like little glowing streams. Two, when you see an updraft. However, this will only give you a little over one charge of rift energy. And three, when you find a rift energy orb, which will give you unlimited rift energy for a short period of time. There's nothing worse than being a sitting duck in the middle of the battlefield with no boost available. If you ever find yourself doing this, make sure you get to Rift Energy as quickly as possible, as not being able to move fast can be the difference between survival and getting shot out of the sky. Number 2. Bobbing and Weaving This one may seem simple, however, you'll find that when you start out, your impulse when your dragon starts getting attacked is to run away as quickly as possible. This is not always the best maneuver, as other dragons can move just as quickly as you can. Instead, the best tactical maneuver is to start making sharp turns behind cover. Everyone's fireball locks on and hones in to a certain degree, but can be run into a rock or some other sort of obstacle instead of hitting you. If you're way up in the sky when you start getting attacked, the first thing you should do is dive to the ground. The closer you are to the ground, the more likely you are to be near some sort of cover you can get around and use defensively. If neither of these things ends up working, you can also try a full stop to turn around and counterattack the dragon that is attacking you. This move can be a little bit tricky and not always successful, but it can sometimes work as an emergency break glass maneuver. Number 3. Picking your best class. Just like in a lot of competitive multiplayer games, you have to figure out what your playstyle is going to be. Because this game is very much like a dogfighter, and unlike a lot of competitive first and third person shooters, you may find yourself playing a class that would traditionally be outside of your comfort zone. The three classes are fairly straightforward. The Marauder, who has the most health and most offensive potential. The Wind Guard that has a medium amount of health and has the ability to heal teammates in battle. And the Phantom, who has the least amount of health, however, arguably has the best special ability out of all of the classes. If you're torn on what class you should be playing, let me suggest starting out with the Phantom class. While some people may be uncomfortable picking the most roguish class in the game, the Phantom's ability to turn invisible offers opportunities for defense and offense that the other two classes simply don't have access to. Suppose you're being chased down a canyon with somebody right on your tail and they launch a bunch of fireballs at you. You can activate your special to go invisible, break, let them pass right by you, then unleash a special attack while coming out of invisibility. The ability to simply turn invisible and get out of most every conflict is simply too valuable to overlook. Number 4. Start out with defensive abilities. There are a number of abilities in Century Age of Ashes. However, at the start of each match, after you select which class you're going to play, you have the option between two secondary abilities. While you could argue that the Phantom class has two defensive secondary abilities, the Wind Guard and Marauder differ in this. For the Wind Guard, your choices for secondary abilities are Smoke Trail or Blast. While Blast can be used effectively to counter certain situations, Smoke Trail is a lot more useful at getting you out of a chase, especially when you're first learning to navigate the maps. Smoke Trail not only blinds the enemies that are directly behind you, but does damage to them making it an effective way to discourage people from following you. The Marauder, on the other hand, has access to Frostbolts and Gust. When you're first starting out, pick Gust. 
While the Marauder is one of the most tanky and offensive classes, it doesn't have much in the way of defense. Picking Gust when you're first learning this class is crucial, so it gives you some sort of defense when you get barraged with fireballs. The trick with Gust is to make sure you wait until you see fireballs coming at you, indicated by the red ring toward the center of your screen. If you time it right, you can get yourself out of a lot of sticky situations, especially because the ability has two charges. Number five, economy of attack. Now, when you see another Dragon Rider, your first impulse might be to unload everything you have. And while sometimes you may get lucky, this in practice is not the best way to get kills. Simply firing your fireballs at an opponent that is far away is most likely not going to land the hit. You want to try and time your attacks when your opponent is most exposed. Any good Dragon Rider will know that you have to bob and weave in between cover to avoid getting hit. Wait for the opportune moment when someone is exposed, and then unleash your attack. Also, it's very much worth noting that even though every dragon has two fireballs they can shoot in a full charge, one fireball by itself will always recharge quicker than the second one. This means you can keep shooting fireballs if only one at a time at a fast pace. It also works well interspersing your fireballs while you're hitting an opponent with your flame breath. This ensures that you don't waste all of your flame breath that you have charged up and still have some left over for any health that your opponent may have left. Hopefully that helps some of you Dragon Riders out there. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe or drop a like.